everything in life, all the best things in life are on the other side of risk, on the other side of fear. I had no choice but to go through the things I was afraid of, to take risk in order to eat. I'm in a league of my own. I'm starting fresh, but I'm starting from experience. And when I went through depression, everything slowed down. The way I could carry myself, the way I dressed a lot, just ground, grinded to a halt. I'm in jail in my own head. There, there was a night where I just thought it's even worth being here. I never let go because of the homelessness, because of the instability. The fear kept me clinging onto them visions. I need this, because every single day I'm scared. I'm scared I'm gonna lose my flat. I'm scared I'm gonna go back to jail. I'm scared I'm gonna get shot and killed like that guy that I used to know back Go by the name of Boots Malone, and it is an absolute honor to be out here performing for you lot tonight. There can't be a day or an hour go by that your vision isn't clear in your head. Twelve thirteen, fourteen. I'm homeless under the subway tunnel. There was some bubble wrap. We slept under there once. I'm breaking into derelict houses and sleeping on the floor. It's like when the people that love you detach and kind of turn the back to an extent. It's a difficult pill to swallow. Everything happened for me quite quickly. Expelled from school about 13, 14. I had a fight with my mum's um, boyfriend. After that, he hated me. So I was homeless. I'd be kicked out. Before that, I was running away. I was jumping out the window. I am running away. Just because the, the home situation was just war. It was a mess. Lots of fighting. Robberies. Violence. Stabbings going on. Shootings or shootings was going on at the time. My mum is in an abusive relationship. She's getting beaten up. I'm seeing my mum with a broken nose. I'm seeing my mum with a big scar on her arm where she's been thrown through glass. So I don't have my mum in my life. I was living in a little flat by myself. Um, I'd met this girl. The girl was now barely interested. She's not messaging back. I was gonna sign to a label. That was my life. They're not now interested. They're not messaging back. So I become depressed. I just lost purpose. I just didn't know what I was doing. Like, what, what was it all worth? Who am I now? Because I was a I was a street guy. So then when I box, it gave me a bit of an exit out of that. Like I got boxing in the morning. So when I didn't box, it's like well, where do I where do I stand now? Because I'm not a nine to five worker. I didn't do my GCSEs. Who am I? So I just kind of went through depression for about two years. And when I went through depression, everything slowed down. The whole momentum that I just built up, the confidence, the, the money that I built up, the savings I had, the way I could carry myself, the way I dressed a lot, just ground, ground into a hole. I'm in jail in my own head. I try and go to, to the gym with my friends and I'd get anxiety. And because I'd get anxiety, I'd feel uncomfortable in my own skin. I thought I was going to be a, a champion boxer because Brian had said it. So in my head, I'd already started to picture myself being somebody. I think even as a kid, I thought I was going to be somebody. So then to then become a nobody, lose all your money, all your confidence, you're not even a boxer anymore. I just become anxious. I just didn't want people to see me like that. I don't know how much longer I can just go on. Just, just, just living like this. I, I was just trying to sleep days away. Sleep on the way, I just, I just wake up and I just think, let's go back to bed and just get through this day. Get through this day. I was just in the thick of this, this dark place. There, there was a night where I just thought, you know what? Is it even worth being here anymore? Anyway? I was just in the kitchen and that's when the thought just went through my head like, what is the point of being here? And and then my phone buzzed. And it was the record label, and it was my girlfriend. It made me feel like I wanted in the house by myself, and I've always felt that. I've always felt guided, blessed. And I just remember being like, "Whoa!" Because I was just having that thought, just thinking. 
how, how do you get out of this? Like, what do you do? And then that happened. So I was ready. It's like, the label, hey, let's talk about it tomorrow. I'm still interested. My girlfriend at the time, hey, what, what you up to? I said, I promise see you or, you know, let's fix things, whatever it was. And I thought, whoa. So I went upstairs to my bedroom and I got down on my knees and I prayed to God. And I remember very clearly what I said. I said, please give me the strength to see my potential because I can't do this by myself. I've, I've hit rock bottom and, and I can't see any way out. And from there on, the whole thing just started to change everything. Everything just started to change. After you get expelled, you go to like a naughty school for a little bit. So you're just drawing and shit, and I was just drawing, and I drew King of the North on the page. So that was one of the early things that I'd, I'd written on this page, King of the North, and then with the Game of Thrones being so popular and, and me being the first one to kind of break through the door, and not only do well in the industry, but be one of the most successful in the the, the genre of grind music. Once, once you've put it out there and you've said it with conviction, it will happen. People just started to, to call me the king of the moon. I predict this whole thing. And if a name doesn't make sense, it doesn't stick. You can't give yourself a name and expect it to stick. It won't stick. I drew this house around the times when I prayed and I was like, I can't do this by myself. And I was living in that little flat. Predicted way before it looked like it was going to happen. I'm saying I won't stop till I'm touring. Word for word. The whole, in fact, in one of my earliest, earliest songs, probably the second mixtape I ever made, I'm saying I want, I want the Bentley with the grey leather. Some smart motherfucker like me thought, you know what? I'm gonna run this whole thing. I'm the first artist from the north of England to not only break into a London-centric industry. You know, it was unheard of. When I'm stood outside my boxing gym, telling my old sparring partner, I'm gonna go into music and I'm gonna develop a career in music. There was no industry in Manchester. There was rappers, MCs, and there were some good ones. No one was breaking in London. Nobody was making no money, so it wasn't happening. You know, a Manchester MC doing well in like the full industry, the London industry, it was just like frowned upon, it was just never happening. Everything in life all the best things in life are on the other side of risk. On the other side of fear. I had no choice but to go through the things I was afraid of, to take risk in order to eat. And, and I think what happened coming from an unstable background and, and going through a lot of the stuff I went through, for people that have not been put into that situation, an unstable situation, you need to be testing yourself. If your heart's not beating fast, you're not even trying. If you're not testing yourself, nothing will ever happen. I wouldn't wish on anybody what I went through. Not because it's the worst thing in the world, it's because people have been through worse stuff than, than me. They've, they've lost parents, you know, my mum for an example, lost her mum when she was 12. It's worse than me. So I'm not in a position to advise people on their particular journey. But what I do know is what you put in, you will get out. That's as simple as life goes. And it might not come straight away. Everything I put, I put four years into boxing. How many press-ups I've probably done? Probably close to a million press-ups or something. I was running, I was running 10 miles in 53 minutes. You know, I put so much work in and then it just stopped. It's like, what, four years? And then I'd done about 10 years on the streets being a street kid. What about all that, what I learned? Progress is irreversible. 
It's not a human being that pays you, it's the universe. The universe will pay you back for all of your hard work. So don't be afraid to work hard. Don't just go out there trying to impress a person. You know, the universe will, will pay you. Don't be afraid of making progress. Don't think things are pointless. And that's what how people get, you think. Just because they're in their spare time, it's pointless doing it. It's not what they're working. And you will get the rewards back. And that's as simple as it is. It's working towards that day in, day out, and never letting go of that vision. It's like, I'm doing this because this takes me there. A lot of people just chill. A lot of people just start going to the clubs and forget what they was on. And then they're like, oh, oh shit, what was on? Oh yeah, but I wanted to do that. Let me get back on that path again. And then they'd look at someone like me and be like, oh, how, how, how do you do it? How do you? It's because I never let go because of the homelessness, because of the instability, the fear kept me clinging onto them visions. I need this because every single day I'm scared. I'm scared I'm gonna lose my flat. I'm scared I'm gonna go back to jail. I'm scared I'm gonna get shot and killed like that guy that I used to know back in the day. And that fear kept me clinging onto the vision. And that's what it takes. There can't be a day or an hour go by that your vision isn't clear in your head. I was obsessed with that vision because I was too scared to just exist where I was because I knew I couldn't handle that. I knew I was getting to a point where it's like, I'm either gonna do something bad to somebody or I'm gonna do something bad to me. So I can't exist here, I need to get there. So it was, it was on repeat in my head. When you learn how to channel your energy into what it is you're trying to get and where you're trying to get to, the two kind of collide. You have a description box, it's like homework. And it's a piece of paper that basically says, what car do you want, what house do you want, what life do you want, what partner do you want, what job description do you want? Do you want a job or do you just want to do what you enjoy? There's just a whole, everything, what type of clothes you want to wear. Who are you as an individual? It's your job to go home and do this homework and fill it out meticulously, meticulously everything from not just the car what's its interior like not just the partner what types of life scenarios are you going to experience together not just the house but what you're going to do when you get the house so for me i told myself that when i get a house i'm going to go abroad and import furniture ornaments from all over the world i, I see it as you've you've got two treadmills a negative treadmill and a positive treadmill on the positive treadmill Everything in your description boxes, the car, the clothes, the career, the experiences, the job description, the, the house, what's in the house, the lot, they're all on this treadmill. They're just placed on in a little package. When you're positive and you're in a good mood, you've pressed the positive treadmill on and these things are just coming slowly but surely. Bam, you get a bonus, you make some extra money. All of a sudden, bam, you get the car that you want, but things just drop off. Depending on your energy output, so the energy that you get from feeling sad, if you go and take that out on someone in road rage, you just burn that energy. You needed that energy. So if you can harness that energy and channel it into being positive and into the things that you wanted, the treadmill speeds up. So more stuff starts dropping off. If you become negative, boom, and all of a sudden you've gone into a negative mindset, you've just switched on the negative treadmill. On the negative treadmill, all of your worst nightmares, your girlfriend leaving you, cheating on you, dumping you, losing your job, having no money, going back into depression, it's all on there, just coming. And depending on how negative you become, how quickly they start to drop off. So it's just a simple case of positive thinking, harnessing your energy, whether it's a, neg a negative or a sad energy, an angry energy, whatever the emotion is, and channeling it and putting it over into a positive direction. All that speeds up your treadmill and it's filling in your description boxes. Be descriptive in what it is that you want. It means there's a job description now for you as a, as a big shoe designer, as an artist, as an MC, as a clothing designer, as a cameraman, as a, there's, all, there's so many job descriptions. There's so many job descriptions whereby we can change our lives being creative. You create your own nine to five job and you just do it 24 seven, that's the only difference. It's, it's pioneership. When my, when my mum's boyfriend beat me up, run away out the house, 
There was like a little subway near my house. I'd go down into the subway, I'd sit up on the grass verge, I'd look up at the stars, and I'd tell myself, I'm gonna be rich, I'm gonna be a millionaire. And I'd do that every time there was an argument at the house. Every single time. Emotions are energy. So with that negative energy, instead of like some people, they go and cut themselves, some people beat people up in school, some people become a nasty kid. I was just running away, sitting there and being like, when I'm older, I am gonna be rich. There'd be a big argument in the house, you know, and I'd be, I'd be running out and I'd feel like crying. I'd be like, when I'm 30, I'm gonna be a millionaire. That just became my coping mechanism. So when Christmas come and I'm like 21 and Christmas day comes and I've got to spend it by myself and I've just got sad music on in the house. As I get to that point of, of, of wanting to cry, I'll be like, I'm gonna be rich. Rich, rich, I'm 30, I'm gonna be a millionaire. There's a guy in the boxing gym called Brian Hughes, a legend really, an MBE actually, and he had champions in the gym. And he would just talk to me about life and make me understand life. And you have to understand as a young black guy, you know, I don't think I've mentioned my real dad in this conversation once, so he obviously wasn't there. My mum's husband had life situations and problems of his own. He stopped working, he was sad, he was in a bad place. So he, he guided me up until a certain age and that completely stopped. So going into like adulthood, anything after 12, I've always been my own man. I've always looked after myself and the people around me. So he was the first man to kind of be like, I don't know, I guess it'd be like having a, a, grand, a granddad figure or whatever, just to explain life. He said to me that I was going to be a future champion. You're going to be a champion. And he was right, but it just wasn't in boxing, you know. What I didn't know at the time is I wasn't emotionally stable at all. i have been through too much. Too much had gone on. So boxing wasn't the, the thing for me. As much as I was very good, I just didn't know who was going into the gym and what day I might be sad, I might be too aggressive. He's got dementia. He can't remember much. So I've been to visit him and he, he doesn't really remember me, he doesn't really remember his, his own family and stuff. And I'd love to be able to, to sit with him and, and let him see everything what I've built up and, and, and let him see that his judgment wasn't off and I did become a champion. But just not in, in, the, in the hurt sport. There just come a point in boxing where I realised I'm too intelligent. I have too many skills to just be trained in the background like a gladiator, put into the ring and made to fight another uh, gladiator. There was more opportunity for a mind like mine in life. So I just, I just took the leap and decided to to make music, just decided to just express myself blindly. There was no industry up here, nothing. But I just decided that's what I'm gonna try and do. Man told me we will start outside the gym. He told me I'm gonna start rapping, I'm gonna start emceeing. Yeah, we were sparring partners. We were sparring partners. When you start verbalizing what you're gonna do on a platform as big as the UFC. And you're saying that with conviction and you're putting out that out there that that's what's going to happen and that's on your positive treadmill and that's what's coming. That's why his results were so massive. We put an end goal in this description box. And what you don't understand about the description box at the time is you might not have filled in the, the, the happiness box. Because nine times out of ten, you're not thinking about happiness when you're thinking about all the material goods. You're just thinking about getting there. And there come a point with me where and everything I've ever wanted is in here. Lamborghini, million pound house. And then what can end up happening is you get there and you, you can be 
unfulfilled, unsatisfied, because you never took friends into consideration. You, you put in so much into your business that you're not putting things into family time. And you're just kind of climbing this pyramid of when you sit on the top of the pyramid and you get to the end goal that you've had in this description box and it drops off the treadmill. The treadmill's empty. So you can stay on the positive treadmill all you want. There's nothing else to drop off. And then you have a down day. You have a day where your trauma creeps up and then you're sad, you're deeply sad inside and you think, eh? Because I've just got everything I wanted. Tyson Fury talks about it. His whole plan was to fight Klitschko. But when Tyson Fury was training at the boxing gym, when I was just an amateur looking up to him, Klitschko was in power, reigning supreme. So for him to aim at Klitschko was like ridiculous, like mad. Who are you gonna fight Klitschko? When are you gonna win? And become the champion of the world, heavyweight. And you're just one of us. Mad. But he'd done it. And once he'd done it, that was the last thing on his treadmill. That was his end game, end goal. And then he goes into depression. Witness Conor McGregor do the same thing. And he was a double weight champion in the organization before he got into the UFC. So he's got it in his mind. I'm going to be a double champion in the UFC. That's what I'm going to do. It's never been done before though. So then he becomes the first one to do that. Where'd you go from there? When your whole life is around becoming the double champion of the organization that nobody gets in, nobody from Ireland especially, and then you get there, where do you go from there? And that's where you see him with that confidence of accomplishing that. Then he goes and fights Mayweather. Then he comes into crazy money, stupid money. Where do you go from there? And this is where I see the pattern of people struggling with what do you do when the last thing drops off the treadmill? Because that is a dark and lonely time. And that's what happened with me. I used to look at the skeptics, the wireless, some of the originators in, in this grind music, what I'm involved in and thought, I'm gonna overtake these guys. I'm gonna be the main guy where everybody speaks about. I'm gonna take it to the next level. I'm gonna be the one with a big house, the this, that, and the other. I've dropped nine projects. Five of them were prior to being an established artist. So five of them weren't for sale. Four of them were for sale. Each year, I've been in the top 10. I sold out four tours. My last tour was the biggest tour in grind history. Four festival seasons. Four years doing campaigns, I'm my own marketeer. Four years in the limelight and consecutively being at the very top, independent, running my own record label. That means I own the rights to all of my music, mine. When the house dropped off the treadmill, that's it. No one can ever kick me out of my house again. I'll never be homeless again. What now? Where do I go from here? What next? Because I've aimed too low. I intended to be a millionaire when I was 30. I was 27 at the time. I'm 28 now. When you're aiming for these things at the age of 20, 21, it's so many millions of miles away, it's hard to get the complete timing right. I got the timing wrong. In fact, I aimed too small. What I had to do this year, beginning of this year, was move the goalposts. Rub everything out in the description box and go again. Fill in the description box. What do you want? I want a career in America. I want a career in America. I want them to know me. I want them to understand me. I want them to look back at my, my journey and be like, whoa. Legend shit. So I've just done this whole thing once before and now I'm feeling um, it in and embarking on this new journey. That's what Tyson Fury's just done. He went into depression because what motivates you is what gets you out of bed. And there was nothing to get me out of bed. So what I've decided to do is, is commit my life to my supporters, all my energy into making sure no one gets in the way of us accomplishing that. That's what I'm going to get. Nobody will stop that. This is what we need to do. That's what we need to take. When I've not got something to get, my drive was just gone. 
was just a mere mortal. It just took me a while to gather all the information and what was going through my head. And, and then I just kind of realized I don't make music to make campaigns and hit the charts. I make music because that is my medium of, of self-expression. That's what I do. So that's when I made MEM part two. That's what I'm at. Financially, we were broken. We went from having carpets to having no carpet. It went from a good vibe in the house to always arguments, always difficult times. That, that home scenario of, of just war in your own house is a situation that will make or break up. Abusive situations going on, home, going on at home, domestic violence and all that kind of a thing. And you don't really fit in in school anyway because you're from the hood. So there were stages as a kid where I was like a little bit suicidal as a, as a child. I was just down. I just had no understanding of what was going on. I got stabbed in my leg off, off a group of kids. Never fitted in. The kids in the area made it clear that I didn't fit in. I wasn't one of them. Because my mum had tried so hard to wrap me in cotton wool and not expose me to the lifestyle that she'd kind of come from. When I was hit with, with violence and stuff like that, I just wasn't sure how to deal with but it. Like my mum's boyfriend would run in the room and, and be like, this is my room, not your room. And I'm like nine or 10. The aggression that he's delivering that information to a nine-year-old kid, you're, you're traumatizing me. Because when he walks out of that room, I'm thinking, what's mine then? The majority of the times when there were school trips, we couldn't afford it. Just knowing you weren't like the other kids. When the kids was pulling up in, in, in nice cars, and you'd just be crouching down because you didn't want people to see you. Because at that age, high school, you, you know, you're trying to be cool like everybody else. You, you just don't get to experience them moments of being the cool kid. It becomes your personality. That, no gas, no food, tins of beans. I used to be sick and tired of tins of beans, like that was it, that. You don't understand what's happening, you just know that every so often the house goes pitch black. And the candles come out. And I just think eventually, I just got to an age and stage where I kind of fought back. I realised I was, um, I was fueled very much by fear. And I had to change that because it's not, it's not positive. Everything in life is problem solving. That's how I just seen it. If you're creative, it means you've got a good imagination. So what we'd do is if, if the house went pitch black, we'd get the, the candles out. We'd make a game out of it. So we'd make fun out of it. And I think that's why the, the situation of what I went through made me as opposed to break me. The minute you put me in a bad situation, I'm looking for my solution. So if the house goes black, I'm thinking, well, now we can play that game that we can't play when, when we've got electric. I'm going to build an empire. I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. I just like Glastonbury, wireless. The biggest tour in Grime history. Each year, I've been in the top 10. I sold out four tours. So everything you do, every bit of progress you, you make will serve some kind of a purpose in your life. I'm just trying to share hope. And I get thousands of messages from people that are like, you've stopped me from committing suicide, you've helped me fight depression. I'm opening doors, I'm creating job descriptions for people. So it's like, come, be inspired like I, as I was. Build yourself up. What they've expelled you from school, don't worry. And don't go too far down the criminal route because it might not be you. Stay focused, stay on track. Because there's things you can do over here, find what it is that you enjoy doing and put all of your energy into it. What do you want to do? Who do you want to be? Don't be afraid to say it. Don't be afraid to believe it can possibly happen. I'm at the top of a mountain. These other mountains, these horrible up here, proper rocky and there's snow on the top, it's cold. I don't know why anyone's trying to get up here, but that mountain over there, he's got, it's tropical. 
these tropical creatures flying about, these tropical fruits on the trees. You know, that's the mountain I'm going over to now. So the process is come down from the mountain I've just climbed and climb that mountain because up that mountain is contentment. The material things aren't what count. Everything that I had done was kind of excessive and from a childish perspective. I just wanted these material things because that's just the things I didn't have growing up. My mum going through what she went through, I wanted to be able to protect her and make sure that she never had to worry about money ever again in her life. That was another part of this plan. But when I got up to the top of this mountain and I'm up here and I'm freezing by myself, it's like the one thing that I had to unravel in myself is just little things that like, coming from where I come from, you're not honest. You're not honest with people and you're not honest with yourself. Even if you tell the truth, you're still not honest. I'm in a league of my own. And this is the part where I live. I'm starting fresh, but I'm starting from experience. I'm not starting stagnant. I'm not starting from having anything. I'm starting from being financially stable. Not everybody's honest with themselves. And when you're not honest with yourself, you can't improve yourself. If you're not honest with yourself, you can't take the hides off. You can't take that bad attitude off. You can't take that negative version of yourself off. And that's what I had to, had to do. I had to just strip all of them back and keep the things that I've learned. So I learned to fight and look after myself. I keep that, because life's a jungle, you've got to look after yourself. But the bravado around it, I'll take that off. Because why, why am I scaring people? I'm an honest person, I'll, I'll tell the truth. But again, bravado is not honest. So I'll just take that off. So I'm just taking, I'm stripping myself back. Um, and preparing myself for the next level. Because now what I've told myself is I'm going to Hollywood. I'm going to Hollywood and I'm going to be doing some big things out there. How does that feel? What does the red carpet feel like underneath your Louboutins? That's what I'm interested in. So I'm aiming international now. I've had to open up my mind to the next level. Within the next level, what I will prioritise is happiness. Not to say that I wasn't happy, but there's an unfulfillment in the last thing dropping off the treadmill and that will happen to anybody. Energy is our natural currency, okay? Money and precious metals are a man-made currency. They don't exist. Just a big heavy bit of something that's shiny. It's just a part of the earth. It's not a precious metal at all. We decided that's a precious metal because it looks pretty and it, and it probably serves certain purposes. Same with money. An actual note is an IOU slip to the bank. Energy is our natural currency. When I go on to have children, will I bring my children up with, with the man-made currency? What money? You bring them up with love, nurture, time, lessons, deep-rooted lessons. You teach them to do artwork like my mum done to me. That natural currency is what will develop a beautiful person inside and out. And that's the currency I'm interested in gathering now. Because right now I've got a bank full of the other currency. All it does is buy me freedom. All it does is means I can lie in bed till whenever I want. Nobody can tell me what to do. If I can get a bank full of the other currency, that's a whole different ball game. And I think that's what a lot of people get twisted on their journey to success. They're aiming for the wrong currency. Most memorable moment in my career. There was a Christmas that I had with my mum. It was in, um, before I lived in this place, I lived in like a, like a townhouse. And um, we had a Christmas there. And I had a great birthday. Which was rare. I never used to have been. I was on Instagram dancing and all that. And and I got my mum a car. Uh, I've done it before, but it was just that was a and I made her this little thing. I, I put some pictures on a piece of paper and I, and I wrote some notes to her and stuff. I decorated it and on, on it I put we made it. 
um, and we had we'd, we'd made it out of that struggle that we was in. So for me, that jumps out as a, um, a key moment when I became happy. Um, and then I bought this place. In M&M &M 1 I'm talking about having an office and everything, cocaine white, so then I went and got the cocaine white grand piano. Um, just accomplishing the, the things that I kind of seen in my head. Um, and just every every single time I get a message from people saying oh, I've helped and I've changed their life, I just feel like I've done what I said I'm going to do. A lot of people that I hired in, in my business are friends and family. And I, and I told them I would change their life. And I deliver. When I say it, it gets done. I don't, I don't regret anything. And I understand that everything is a part of my journey. The whole thing, every single thing happens for a reason. And it all happens around what it is that you aim to get. And that's, that's God's plan and God's meticulous. And that's why we can't go back in time. So I wouldn't mess with it. Cause it was God's plan, I just wouldn't touch it. Because one little, if you move a leaf in the past, the whole thing might not happen. And that scares me to tears. To be trapped in the lifestyle I came from before this, scares me to tears. So I wouldn't touch it. I'm still here and I'm fresh. I'm levels above what I used to be, so you know.